Hello, it's Nick Leverland here from Pegasus Property. Um, I'm one of the co-directors at Pegasus Property. We're a development company based in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, we do a lot of sourcing for people. Uh, we do the development process, i.e. project manager renovation, and we do lettings as well, or sales for people ongoing. So we try and keep it all in-house. Now, you have to excuse the cap. <laughs> I'm actually uh, about to go on a canoeing holiday, so I've got my stupid canoeing holiday, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid canoeing clothes on in my cap. So it's very warm where we are right now. So you have to excuse uh, me if I'm a bit a bit warm. So what I wanted to talk about in this video was um, kind of different investment strategies within property. Um, this kind of got me inspired to do, what inspired me to this video is that I was actually talking to one of my clients um, and they said, hey Nick, I've got this much money. What would you, what would you advise me to do with it? Now, something we say at Pegasus Property is what would I expect? That's one of our sayings. When we started this company, we wanted everything to be done in a way that we would expect it to be done ourselves as landlords and property developers ourselves. If we were on the receiving end of the service, what would we want? That might seem like quite an obvious thing to say, and it is, uh, and I'm sure most people that run businesses think along the same way, but I think it was uh, an important um, sort of premises to start the company on because a lot of um, sourcing agents and people that project manage renovations letting agents, a lot, of them, a lot of them aren't actually property developers or landlords themselves. So we've seen uh, what other people do and strengths and weaknesses, and we try to make um, the weaknesses of other people our strengths, such as good communication, knowledge, expertise, keeping people in the loop, all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, I digress. So, you know, someone comes to me, and this happens quite often, so I've got this much money to invest, what do I do? So. If you're one of those people that are watching this, hopefully this will be uh, interesting for you. Um, if you're not one of those people, but you want to be one of those people that want the money to invest, this also will be uh, interesting for you as well. So let's just take, for example, uh, somebody's got 200K. Now, what I often say to people is, what is it you want to achieve? You know, people have got different goals. Everyone's different, right? So. Some people say, Nick, I want to uh, have cash flow. I want to have a cash flow and portfolio and I want to be able to quit my job ASAP uh, because I want to spend more time with my kids or I want my I want more income so my kids go, go to a better school, whatever. Or you, you might be single, no kids, you want to go on holiday more, you want that freedom. Everyone's got these different reasons. Now, I mentioned cash flow because that is the reason most people come to uh, Pegasus is because, because we're in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, what we've got going for us is that properties um, comparatively cheap in, uh, in comparison to the rents and that results in the yield being higher so you get more return on your money. Uh, for example, I'm just plucking these numbers out of thin air, if you bought a house in London for 500k the rent could be £2,000 a month which sounds awesome but when you take into account you've got a mortgage on that and there's not really much money left over. What London has got going for it is its capital appreciation so the houses are go going up in value or they were um, so a lot of people that are investing around that area are kind of relying a lot on capital appreciation as part of their investment strategy, which I don't think is uh, particularly safe. I'll tell you why. It's because if there was a housing correction, 20% say across the UK, in London, that's a lot of money. Whilst up north, it's a lot less money. It's more bearable. Um, and anyway, when you're buying and holding strategy, the, the house prices going up and down isn't too relevant because your strategy is to keep it for as long as possible. So, um, you know, and, and so that's an example, half a million London, rents £2,000. In Stoke-on-Trent, you could buy a house for 60K, you could rent it for 400 or 450 all day long. You know, as a result, you could buy, uh, you know, get my calculator out, I'm terrible at maths. Uh, you know, you, you could buy 8.3 of those in Stoke-on-Trent. So if you times that by, say 400, uh, the rental income is £3,300-ish. So, you know, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Basically, you get you get more bang for your buck when you invest where we are. Excuse me. So, what I say to my clients is, you want to you want to work out basically what it is you want, what it is you need, and then you want to reverse engineer it from there. To be able to reverse engineer it, you need to know some information first. So, when I say reverse engineer, what I mean is, work out what that cash flow goal is. If that cash flow goal was two thousand pound a month, for example which would replace a lot of people's incomes, and that could be pretty passive cash flow as well, so, i.e. 
you just get up in the morning and do what you want and every month £2,000 lands in your bank account net, you know, every month. So how many properties would you need in order to make £2,000 a month? And from there, how much money would you need to buy that many properties? You know, I mean, so this is how you reverse engineer it. Uh, and then the other thing to take into account is time. So that's the main thing. So I'll talk about that in a sec. So if we work on the numbers of £2,000, uh, for example, you could make quite comfortably 250 a month net off a single let, off a mini HMO, four beds, you could make five to six hundred pound a month net, off a six bed, all en suite style HMO, you could make about 1300 pound a month net. So if we went on a mixed strategy, because that's what I like to do is diversify people's portfolios so they're safe from you know market stuff happening, uh, you could probably do, let's say, three buy to lets at two fifty each. That's seven fifty, and then with twelve hundred left, you could just do two mini HMOs. So that would be five properties in total. Three buy to lets, two mini HMOs, four beds, making five six hundred pound a month net. Um, how achievable is that? Five properties. Numbers wise, I mean, you're talking, you know, you could pick a house up for between 50 and 60k um, as a buy to let that is. Uh, you'll probably have to spend 10 to 15 on it, sprucing it up, and you could rent that out for 450, say. And then you'd refinance it and you would pour as much money out as you can. You wouldn't get all your money out, you'd have to keep some tied up. So if we were looking at this, for example, if you got a house for 60, spent 10 on it, it's 70. It's worth, you know, probably not a lot more really, maybe 80 at the most when it's done. When you refinance that, obviously you're gonna get a chunk of your money back out, but not all of it, so you're gonna keep a bit of money tied up. Now, each time you do that, you leave a bit of your money tied up in the deal. So eventually, your pot of money will dwindle and run out. So what you really wanna do, is you wanna try and split your pot down the middle, and you wanna try and put some in some cash flow and assets, like buy selects and HMOs, and the other side of the pot, you want to do things like flips. So that's where you put your money in and you get your money out again at the end of the at the end of the process. Or you could lend your money out on a fixed interest basis, you know, and get your money back uh, 12 months later or whatever the uh, whatever the agreement is that you have. So talking about timeline then, so if it if you if somebody saw you a deal and you said yes, from that day to completing it could take, if it was cash, maybe 28 days, eight weeks. If you're using lending, it could take three months quite easily. Uh, the builders could get in, they do their thing, depending on what sort of project it is, it could take anything from six to 12 weeks, you know, and then, and then you would refinance it at the end. You could start the refinancing process before the, 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 the project's actually finished, so you can get all the paperwork done with the brokers, get the mortgage stuff all sorted. Basically, the, the, the um, bank would send someone around to carry out valuation. They would come out as close as possible to just when the project's been finished, so that, you know, it, so you're saving time, basically. You don't want to be finishing and then starting the process and then waiting six weeks and then it's sitting empty for six weeks and all this sort of stuff. You know, you want that money back out again as quickly as possible. So from buying it to renovating it and getting your money back out, could take quite easily six to seven months, maybe a bit more, depending on the size of the project. Same with a buy to let. If you're doing a flip, i.e. you buy something, you do it up and then you sell it for a profit, I mean, that could take, because what you've got to bear in mind is you've got the sale bit on the end of it as well. So the buying process and the renovation process would be pretty similar, but instead of refinancing it, you're selling it. So you've got to go to an estate agent, they've got to market it, they've got to find somebody. Let's say you were lucky and found somebody within two to four weeks. Um, you know, they could be in a chain. It could take three plus months basically on top. So it could take you anything from nine to 12 months to, to do a flip. So you've got to bear these things in mind. So if you're kind of sitting there going, well, I want to get out of my job now, you've got to be realistic, you know, unless you've got like millions of pounds sitting there to invest. Uh, you know, the reality is it's going to take a little bit of time. So you need to plan this out. So. That's all I wanted to speak about really, was just, you know, um, strategizing as in like timeline, how much money you're gonna need. You know, you need some facts in front of you, like 
what sort of deals are out there, what sort of money do you have to put into them, what do you keep tied up when you're finished, you know, and, and I'll just quickly for one minute, because I'm, I'm conscious that this is going over 10 minutes now, um, if I just quickly grab a few spreadsheets, uh, these are my deal analyzer spreadsheets that I use for analyzing all the property investments that we do, if I just quickly jump on one here, so this is a four bed mini HMO, uh, this was secured for £66,000 um, and the renovation is 25k When it's finished, it'll be worth about 95k So 75% loan to value, so you get a 75% mortgage on it. So you keep 25% in, you're going to leave 35k of your money tied up. So it's going to cost you just over 100k to do a project like this with all your fees and all the rest of it. So this is a four bed mini HMO and you're going to leave 35k of your money tied up. Um, you're going to make in excess of uh, £600 a month net. So, you know, if you've got a pot of cash, you can think, right, if I had 200 k I could do one of these projects, keep 35 k tied up, so I've now got 165 k You can then do another one, keep another 35 k So you could probably bang out three of these with 200 k before you kind of like, you know, be, be, your pot would go basically, or, or your pot would be under, sorry, under what you would need to do another one of these projects then you could do smaller projects to keep going. But the point is, is that eventually you'd run out of money. So what I advise people to do, try and split your pot down the middle, 100K, lend it out 10 to 12% per annum, which is pretty sweet. Get first charge on, a, on an asset, it's really safe. That's a nice return, you know, 12K, 10 to 12K per year, thank you very much. Uh, or you could stick it in a flip and, you know, try and get 20K out or something um, and keep that pot growing. Once that pot reaches a certain point, uh, you could then release down some funds into your um, your your cash flowing assets. You know your the assets that you retain in order to cash flow money. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that was helpful. I hope that's not burst any bubbles. Um, something I will quickly touch on is that the golden egg deals, as I like to call them, are the ones where you get all your money out and you get to keep it and get cash flow as well. Um, you can try and gear these properties up more, i.e. From 75% up higher, like 85% and stuff like that with buy to lets. Kent Reliance do a mortgage product which is for uh, HMOs and they will allow you to go up to 85%, but the interest is quite high. If I just quickly dial in 85% on this deal analyzer and then put in the uh, interest rate, yeah, I mean, you're leaving 25k tied up now instead of 35k, but your cash flow has just dropped £150 a month. So it's something to bear in mind. Um, you know, and if you over gear your portfolio and something happens in the market, just 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 be be patient, just be careful, uh, invest with different people, spread your bets, different companies, different strategies. Uh, I would not recommend investing in one area with the same strategy again and again because a little thing could change, like HMOs is a good example. Something could change in the HMO market, suddenly it's not a viable investment strategy anymore and all your portfolio is HMOs in that same area with that same company. You know, it's, it's common sense, but it's quite normal when people get comfortable with a certain company, uh, which is what happens with us. People get comfortable with us, they get comfortable with the process, they build the trust with us. They like our service. They, they, they just keep wanting to do more and more with you rather than trying to find other people. So I wouldn't advise that. I'd advise actually um, basically investing with different people in different areas to try and spread your spread your risks a little bit. Um, I mentioned the golden egg deal, i.e. where you get all your money out and you get to keep the asset. Uh, those do exist. Um, they tend to be where we are, commercial to residential conversions, i.e. we will buy um, an old pub, nightclub, offices, uh, whatever, and we convert, convert it into flats or something. Um, those are bigger, but like you've got to have more money to invest. Uh, I mean, we're doing a pub conversion at the minute. We, Bought the pub for 125k, spending about 270k on the conversion, and it'd be worth about 600k when we're finished. So all the money will come back out, and we and we'll have nine flats as well, cash flowing. You know, uh, 400 a month each, which is pretty nice, and they pay the bills as well. Um, but you're talking, you know, in excess of 350k or whatever to do a project like that. Uh, and then another project we're doing where we get all the money out. Is a nightclub. We've got planning to turn that into a 10 bed and an 8 bed HMO in four flats above. That's 250k to buy and 550k to convert, and it'd be worth in excess of a million pound. So we're, we're talking big numbers here, and typically property development companies like mine 
we wouldn't source uh, a deal like that on. We'd want to joint venture on it, i.e. we would have half, you would have half. We don't joint venture on smaller deals because there's not enough meat on the bones on the smaller deals for us to, you know, we'd much rather get a sourcing fee and a project management fee for doing the, the development and then letting it for you ongoing. That means you get to own, that, own the property 100%. It's just a cleaner way of doing business and that's the way we do things. So yeah, uh, that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, just a few uh, cheeky plugs. Uh, we have got a workshop that we run, uh, which is every sort of six weeks. Um, a lot of our investors actually come on our workshops initially to check us out. And then they decide to invest with us. So we basically meet for coffee in the morning. It's always on a Saturday. Uh, we have coffee, we introduce ourselves, bit of networking, uh, and then we go out in a minibus and we drive you around all the projects that we're doing. Not all the projects, because we've got 19 projects under renovation, but we take you through uh, different different variations of projects, explain how we source them, how we project manage them, all our systems, financing. Uh, basically, it's, it's a real touch and feel, behind the scenes look at um, our company. So you're welcome to come along to that. You can buy a ticket. I'll put, uh, I'll put the link for the page um, in the description. Uh, and yeah, I also mentioned a deal analyzer, which I was looking at whilst I was talking. You can buy that off us as well. That's really cool. Uh, and yeah, that's it. I'll end this video now because it's dragging on a bit. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate you giving me your time. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, drop a comment in. Tell us what you think. If, uh, if there's some other subjects you'd like me to cover, please let me know. Uh, thank you. Bye.